Okay, it's time for a good old fashioned October Blu-ray haul. I have gotten so much stuff over, wait, wait, spoilers, but forget you saw that. I have got so much stuff over the past month, Blu-rays and 4Ks, and I haven't done a Blu-ray haul on this channel in a long time, and that's because I've been doing them on Patreon for a while. So for my Patreon subscribers, I've been doing monthly Blu-ray hauls, but it's October, it's the Halloween season, and I have so much stuff I just kind of wanted to do it for everybody. So welcome to the Cobweb channel, everyone. My name is Daniel. I got my October Vinegar Syndrome subscriber package. I'm going to save that for the end, by the way. Some fancy new 4Ks that everybody's talking about. Some Kino Lorber stuff. Some Terror Vision stuff. Let's just get into it and start with A Nightmare on Elm Street on 4K. Now, I was interested in getting the Steelbook for this, but I kind of missed out on it. I just never order Steelbooks soon enough because... I don't know, I'm just not an obsessive steelbook collector. I don't think about it that much, but I just got the slip covered edition and I must say, it looks really, really good. Like I love the matte fish finish on the slip cover. And uh, I, I'm aware that this Freddy is not the Freddy from the original Nightmare on Elm Street. I think that's from three or four or something, which is a really weird oversight, but I can't deny that it's a good picture of Freddy. And I admit a big reason I wanted this, I mean, for one thing, it is one of my favorite movies of all time, like pretty much every horror fan. I adore A Nightmare on Elm Street. It is definitely my favorite of the series. But um, yeah, I wanted to see the 4K and everything, but I'm not a big 4K snob, so that wasn't super important to me. I wanted this movie on its own. I only have it in the ugly Blu-ray pack of the whole series, and I just wanted a nice release of it. So I'm really happy to have this. Looking forward to checking it out on 4K. And in that same order from Amazon, I also got The Awakening. This is a haunting movie from 2011 starring Rebecca Hall. I just recently saw it for the first time. I actually watched it on Canopy, which is a streaming service that's free if you have a library card. So I highly recommend it. Um, and I loved it so much, I had to order a physical copy of it. I wanted to show it off in my ghost video. It's my last video where I talked about this movie, but it didn't arrive quite in time. But I absolutely adore this film. If you've not seen The Awakening, I highly recommend it. It is streaming several places, like on Canopy, but this physical release was like eight bucks. So absolutely love this. And then also from Amazon, I ordered several Kino Lorber titles. Now, Kino Lorber did have a sale over the last month. I didn't put it in order there, but Amazon had a buy three, get one, or buy two, get one free sale going on. They had a bunch of Kino stuff in there, so I ended up getting four. And uh, first of all, I got Frogs. I have been wanting to see this for a long time. I've just never gotten around to it, and I was pretty excited that Kino Lorber announced they were putting it out in their Kino Cult line. I, I hadn't bought anything from Kino Cult. It's like like a sub-label where they put out schlocky old movies, you know, I love schlocky old movies, and I like Animal Attacks movies and frogs, and that just sounds like a lot of fun, and it's got Ray Milland and Sam Elliott, which is really cool. Also, another movie uh, like it, they put out a lot of Animal Attacks movies under this Kino cult line recently, is Squirm. Now, this is a Jeff Lieberman movie. He made movies like Just Before Dawn and Satan's Little Helper, and this killer worm movie, Squirm. This was actually not in the sale, but it was only 12 bucks, so I thought... 12 bucks is an excellent price for a slipcover boutique release of a movie that I am very interested in seeing. I mean, how awesome is that cover art? Yeah, with these, they released a lot of other Animal Attacks movies, I think mostly from the 70s, and I'm interested in getting more of them, but this is how I started out. And then I also grabbed Cujo on 4K. Kino released this on 4K quite a while ago, but I, I just never bought it. I've been waiting for the right time, and this sale was the right time. I've only seen this movie once, but I loved it. It's a Stephen King film about a killer dog starring D. Wallace. I thought it was a great movie, but I've never rewatched it and I've never owned it physically. So I am very, very excited to have this on 4K. Just what a good movie. I'm really excited to rewatch this. And here's a movie I've been interested in for a while, but never picked up. This is The Victim. It is a TV 70s horror film from 1972, and it's starring Elizabeth Montgomery, and she is uh, the lead in Bewitched, so Samantha. Samantha in Bewitched, the TV show. Um, I'm a big Bewitched fan. It's a fantastic show, and she's great in that, of course. So looking forward to checking out this, like, serial killer, a guy is calling you and he's super creepy, kind of a TV horror movie. I really like 70s TV horror films. And next up, I've got a subscriber unboxing. This is a bunch of stuff that an amazing subscriber to this channel, Mark, sent me. He sent me some more stuff in the past, and he's just been such a supporter of this channel. He actually has a podcast called Celluloid Cemetery. I've guessed on it before. I will guest on it again soon. And yeah, first of all, he just sent me a couple of Arrow Video 4Ks. Apparently, he ordered them from Arrow, and they sent him double. Like, they sent him double the copies that he ordered. So he just sent me the excess, which is amazing. First of all, it is the new Friday the 13th 4K of the 2009 remake. 
I'll be honest with you. I never would have bought this on my own. Absolutely never would have bought it. I have seen this movie once and I kind of hated it. I thought it was awful. I really just hated like the 2000 sheen of it. I like my Friday the 13th, 80s and a little grungy. Um, I hated the characters. And before you say, what's well, a Friday the 13th movie? Who cares about the characters? I do like the characters in my favorite Friday the 13th films, like Friday 2 and 4 and 6. I like those characters. And I hated these characters. But back when I saw it, I was a lot less forgiving to 2000s horror. I would say to the 2000s is my least favorite decade for the horror genre. Um, it's real. There's a lot of misses in there for me. And I didn't used to like the aesthetic of 2000s horror, but I've softened on it in recent years. There's more 2000s horror movies that I like now than I did then. So I want to give it a second chance. I thought it was very nice that he sent me the 4K because it is a really, really cool looking release. I actually want to go ahead and open it. And it is actually totally sold out now. They sold out and Arrow Video said they're not going to be producing any more copies. And this is it. Okay, they put this wrap on super tightly. So I'm trying to be careful. But yeah, the fact that I got it does feel pretty special because if I did rewatch this movie in the future and wanted this release, it would not have been an option for me. Oh man, this slipcover feels so nice. I mean, look at that. It's got a bit of a shine to it. Um, I'm guessing that... It's got reversible cover art with the original poster art, and it does. Very, very cool poster. Plus, you know, it is special that we have this movie because this is really the only modern Friday the 13th film we have. You know, Halloween's got that whole trilogy now, but this is the only modern Friday the 13th film. And uh, I, I guess, you know, I, I want to be thankful for that because who knows when we're going to get another Friday the 13th movie. They keep talking about making, like, TV shows and stuff, and I'm not very interested in that. I want a down-and-dirty slasher film with Jason Voorhees, and that's what this movie did give us, so I'm going to check it out again. So what do you think about this movie? Let me know. And then I also got Torso, which is a Sergio Martino Giallo film, and this is one, kind of like Friday the 13th, I'd only seen once. I don't remember hating, but I don't remember having, like, a great time with it, but it is... A very respected Jallo, so it's kind of, it's one that I want to give a second chance to. Also because uh, it's starring Susie Kendall, and I really like Susie Kendall from Bird with the Crystal Plumage and and that kind of stuff. She's really great, and I remember this having some pretty incredible murder sequences with a, a, the the killer in this with a ski mask does look really, really cool. That is a beautiful, beautiful slipcover. I also remember this movie being really sleazy, even for a giallo, which maybe threw me off the first time, but yeah, I will be able to check it out again in 4K. Very, very cool. And then he also sent me Eyeball, which is another giallo, uh, and this one is from Umberto Lenzi. I actually have seen this movie. I watched it once before on YouTube, actually, because it wasn't very available. But yeah, this is awesome. This is another giallo that I'm excited to watch again. I don't remember very clearly, but I remember having a pretty good time with it. So yeah, that is Umberto Lenzi's Eyeball. Very cool cover. Look at that skull face, dude. That's awesome. And then he sent me the Severin release of Castle of Blood, the Blu-ray they have since released, th released this on 4K. I actually watched their release of it on 4K because um, I watched it as part of the Danza Macabre Volume 2 box set. I did a review for that set here on the channel. But I actually got rid of that set because as I was very honest about in my review, I didn't like that set very much. Um, so it just didn't feel worth the very high price tag for me. I got my money back by reselling it. But I'm excited to now have this movie again. He had an extra copy. I'm guessing he got the 4K. So he just sent it over to me. It's a Barbara Steele gothic horror film. I didn't love it when I saw it. But, you know, any gothic horror film, I'm happy to have in the collection. And then a few non-horror movies he sent me. I'll just go through these real quick because it is spooky month, as you know. Uh, but we've got Airplane, Top Secret, and all spoof movies and Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles was actually uh, my first date with my wife. We saw this in theaters. We actually met right after Gene Wilder passed away and the theater was doing some Gene Wilder screenings. And yeah, our first date, we went to see Blazing Saddles. And I remember having a pretty good time with it, but I haven't seen it since. So happy to have these spoofs in the collection as well. And then here's some stuff that I got from Terror Vision. So Terror Vision was a sub-label under Vinegar Syndrome, uh, but has since gone out on their own. They have their own website. I think they're doing pretty good. And this past weekend, I was actually at a 24-hour horror movie marathon at a theater in Chicago. It was at the Music Box of Horrors, at the Music Box Theater. So if you're wondering if I really am as crazy about movies as I seem on this channel... 
The truth is, yes, yes, I did pay and travel to attend a 24-hour horror movie marathon. It was a good time. It was an endurance test at times, but it was a good time. And there were several vendors there, like Severin was there, and Terror Vision was there. They had a booth, and I wasn't expecting to buy three Blu-rays from them, but I did. They put out, like, real low-grade schlocky stuff for the most part, but their slipcovers are so cool, and I was talking to them, and they were telling me about movies. They're pretty convincing, <laughs> and I bought some. Got them for a little cheaper than I would have got on the website, which is nice, and they are three titles that I had been eyeing for a while, so it wasn't a total impulse buy. But first of all, I got Hollow Gate. Okay, pause. Look at this cover. Look at this. This is so cool. And I admit, I was totally sold on the cover of this. I actually, yeah, I had been eyeing this for a while. This is an 80s slasher film, Halloween themed. And that right there sells me. Now, this is one that they didn't sell me on. They didn't have the nicest things to say about this movie. I'm not expecting great things. I think it's a trauma movie. But um, they, uh, Terrorvision does put out a lot of shot on video stuff. Oh, there's a little little flyer for them in there. They put out a lot of shot on video stuff. This is actually not shot on video. It was shot on, I think it says 16 millimeter. I'm looking forward to watch it. I don't expect great things, but that slipcover is absolutely stunning. And I love Halloween. I had to have it. And then one that they did sell me on, both me and a buddy of mine who were there, like, uh, they sold both of us. We both bought a copy, was End of the Line. This is actually from the 2000s. I think it's from 2007. Yes, it is. And uh, it is like people on a train. I think it breaks down. I think there's monsters. But the thing that really got me is they said it is actually scary. It is a scary movie. And look, I, as a horror fan, I like all kinds of horror films. I like to get cozy with spooky movies. But um, when I hear a movie's actually scary, like, that does draw me in. I do kind of chase the feeling of being scared. I don't expect it from most, most horror films I watch, and that's okay. But I love it when it happens, and I'm hoping it happens here with End of the Line. Yeah, and this is this is one I've, I've heard good things about even before I talk to them. Look at those monsters there. That looks really cool. This is probably the one I am the most excited to check out. So very much looking forward to it. And then I got... Uh, Shrigala, Shrigala, I want to say. And this is an Indonesian Friday the 13th ripoff from the 80s. I think it's from 1981. I thought it was even later. Okay, 1981, an Indonesian film. Basically just a Friday the 13th ripoff. And uh, I like checking out horror movies from countries I'm not very familiar with. Um, and when they're ripoffs, that just kind of adds a, a layer of fun to it. Looks like that's the Jason Voorhees approximate coming out of the river. And uh, I think it's going to be fun. So I'm very much looking forward to it. I mean, how cool do these look? These look absolutely awesome. So go TerraVision. Excited to start digging into Oh, you know what? Something I need to grab right now. Uh, also technically from Terror Vision is Frogman. I picked up Frogman. I've talked about this on the channel a lot because I saw this. I loved it. I thought Frogman was so great. It's a new horror movie, a found footage film, a cryptid film about them going out trying to find the legendary Frogman out in the woods. Terror Vision put this out and somehow it ended up in Walmarts. It's in Walmarts across the country. So I got it for 17 bucks at Walmart. I was at a Walmart this weekend and I saw it there again. So yeah, pretty, pretty wild that you can just buy it there. Um, it doesn't have as nice a feeling of slipcover as the other ones do. I think this this is just them trying their hand at a mass market kind of thing. So it feels more like a Scream Factory slipcover. This feels like Vinegar Syndrome. But very happy to have this one in my collection. I honestly did not expect this movie to get a physical media release these days, but it did, and that's awesome. Okay, so also while I was gone this weekend, speaking of Walmart, I did pick up the Point Break Steelbook. I've been wanting this for a while, but it was never the right price. I have Point Break on Blu-ray. I didn't feel the need to upgrade to 4K, uh, but I did. I, I do love this Steelbook, but it was always like $35, but it was 20 bucks. Look at that, 20 bucks on clearance at this little, little Walmart in this small town that we stopped at on the road. Like, what a find. That's something that I absolutely had to take advantage of. And Point Break, oh, by the way, not a horror movie. I know, it is Spooky Month. Bear with me. This is my last non-horror movie I'm talking about. Um, this is probably my favorite action movie. As far as just a standard, straight-up, cops versus criminals action film, Point Break is probably my favorite. I just love the camp value of it. I love the brotherly bond of it. I love Keanu and Swayze. It has great action sequences, genuinely, and I'm a huge fan of the movie. So very happy to have this gorgeous steelbook. Okay, and then also while I was gone, I picked up The Guardian. This is a William Friedkin horror film from Scream Factory. It was only, as you can see, $11.99 at a disc replay. No, not disc replay. It was Reckless Records. Reckless Records is a pretty darn cool media store in Chicago. 
And uh, yeah, we were looking around there and I thought that was just a, that was a good deal. And this movie sounds cool. I was talking to my buddy Matt about it, who was with us. And he said it's kind of like folk horror, but in the suburbs. And you know from videos that I've done, I love folk horror. I love suburban horror. That sounds terrific to me. And it's William Friedkin, the director of The Exorcist. So very cool. Happy to have it. And then we also stopped. I bought a lot of stuff this weekend. We also stopped at Half Price Books. I didn't pick up any Blu-rays, but I did get a VHS copy of The Legend of Sleepy Hollow. Now, you might be wondering what version is this? This is a 1980s TV version uh, starring Jeff Goldblum as Ichabod Crane. There you can see Jeff Goldblum right back there. I have seen it. You can watch it on YouTube. It's not widely available, but it is on YouTube. And it's not terribly good. It's okay. It's a little dull. Um, weird thing about it is it all takes place in the snow, like snowy, sleepy hollow. That's weird. Like I want sleepy hollow to be autumnal. I want orange and red trees, but that's not what you get here. But look at that cover art. I mean, that is headless horseman Halloween gold. So. I'm psyched. I'm psyched to have this on VHS. I think that's absolutely awesome. Plus, this is a movie that I don't even think it made it on DVD. So the fact that I have it on physical media at all is pretty unusual and pretty cool. Then I got from Radiance because they actually sent it to me for review. So this one I didn't even pay for, which I think is just so nice of them. Radiance sent me the Japanese Gothic collection they just put out. Uh, Daie, Daie Gothic, I want to say it's called right back here. Um, I don't have a lot of Radiant stuff. I just have a couple of releases, but this is a, a, a set that I absolutely really, really wanted. I'm not going to pretend to be knowledgeable about Japanese horror because I'm just not, but it's something that I'm wanting to get more into and I'm starting to get more into uh, both Japanese horror and uh, Hong Kong horror as well. And uh, so far I've been enjoying what I've been seeing and I thought this would be a good way to go through more. I, I don't care about J cards, by the way, that's going to go away um, to check out more of their movies. So there's this very beautiful cover. I believe these are all from the 50s and 60s. Let's go ahead and pull them out. Yeah, they've all got their individual covers. There's The Bride from Hades, The Snow Woman. I wonder if that's based on the same story that The late the Woman from the Snow, I think it's called, from Quidon is based on. Uh, it definitely seems similar. And then The Ghost of Yatsuya. So this will be a very, very cool experience. And I would definitely like to do a review for it on the channel. Radiance also sent me a few other things, but they sent them to me just as discs. So they just released I, Vampiri, which is actually the first uh, talky Italian horror film ever made. It was from the 50s. So I now have that. And discs one and two for Hakusen too. I'm kind of disappointed they just sent me discs, but you know, I'm not entitled to anything. So that's nice that they sent me anything at all. Um, as a YouTube channel, which is a visual medium, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with these. But hey, I own them technically, but I'm very happy to have the full release of this thing right here. Now, before we get into my Vinegar Syndrome stuff, I just have a few other random pickups to show you. I, I told you I got a lot to show you. So many movies to watch, but I've got my whole life. I'm fairly young. I've got my whole life to watch these movies. There's no big rush. I'm okay. Uh, I got Season of the Witch from George Romero. I love this movie. It's one of the most satisfying witch horror films I've ever seen in my life. One of George Romero's 70s films. I think it's from 1972. I just didn't own it. I just didn't own it before. And very happy to have the Arrow video release now. From a little used media store here in my town, I picked up My Soul to Take for $6. This is one of Wes Craven's last movies. I think Scream 4 is his last movie, and this is second to last. This is like a bad movie, but a bad movie I really like. I, I think it's very fun and entertaining. The script is absolutely insane, but I kind of think the script is less bad and more just stylish, just extremely bizarre and stylish, and I think it's very entertaining for that. Then I finally picked up The Exorcist on 4K. Um, I actually did not own The Exorcist. I know, that's crazy. And it got released on 4K, so I finally picked it up. This is another one I regret not picking up the Steelbook for. I missed out on the Steelbook. It looked a lot better than this, but that's okay. It was selling on Amazon for like 12 bucks recently, so I definitely grabbed it. And then I got Satan's Slave. Okay, I bought this from eBay, and I bought the Vinegar Syndrome release. They, I, they clearly marketed this on their eBay listing as the Vinegar Syndrome release, and then they sent me the Indicator release which I was almost mad about. I mean, I am upset about false advertising, but I do like Indicator. It is region free. It looks like it has a lot of special features. I haven't checked yet, but I think that's probably a lot more than the Vinegar Syndrome release has. So it was a good deal. I'm not mad. I'm not mad. So I'm excited to watch this 70s satanic movie. Should be fun. And then I grabbed The Woman in Black. Uh, I found this for four bucks at a store and I rewatched it before I made my ghost movie. Cause actually, uh, sorry, 
my not my ghost movie <laughs> before I made my ghost video, which is my last video on the channel. And I talked about this movie. I actually saw this in theaters back in 2012. Thought it was kind of boring. Didn't think much of it, but rewatching it, I liked it a lot more for sure. Like I had, I had some bad taste when I was a teenager. You know, I feel like I had better taste when I was a little kid than I did as a teenager. So I, I've just come back around to stuff like this. And I absolutely, I, I really, really like this movie. But okay, the moment you've been waiting for, it's time to talk about Vinegar Syndrome. <laughs> Okay, so I am a Vinegar Syndrome subscriber, which means I get all of their basic mainline releases um, right when they come out automatically. Uh, I, I'm almost to my last month. November is going to be my last month as a subscriber, and I don't think I'm going to continue doing it, but it has been a fun experience. So let's check out the stuff that I got right here. Wow. Okay, this is an incredible looking release. Look at this thing. Look at this. Roman Polanski's The Tenant, which is a movie that I've never seen. You know, I have feelings about Roman Polanski. Um, normally, I'm very good about separating the art from the artist, but there's certain stuff, especially when it involves kids, it's hard to get past. But um, yeah, I, I, I am looking forward to checking this movie out for sure because I do love Rosemary's Baby. So I am going to check out The Tenant, but look at this thing. It looks like a window. Oh my gosh. I, I haven't seen any unboxing, so I'm unfamiliar with this. It's like magnetized. Look at that. I have never, never seen anything like this. Oh, it's got a little pull tab. Um, okay, so you open it and then, oh, wow. Okay, this is like a VSU. This is like one of their VSU editions, except instead of opening this way, it opens with these two. Oh my gosh. Then look, you got a whole booklet in here. You got the slip covered edition. I'm like flabbergasted. I'm so glad that I didn't open this on my own. I opened it on camera because this is... This is so fun. Okay, so here's the book. I don't even really know what this movie is about, but there it is. This is a 4K release of The Tenet. It's from 1976. It's a little over two hours long, um, but I love 70s horror movies, so I'm looking forward to it. And I cannot, I can't get over this thing. This is, this is insane. Oh my God. This is one of the coolest physical media releases I have ever got in my entire life. I really hope I love this movie because it would it would stink to have such an amazing edition of a movie that you don't even like. But I've heard good things about it. I've heard good things. And come on, Rosemary's Baby is a great movie. So look forward to checking out The Tenet. And then I got the Forgotten Jolly Volume 7 box set. Confession, this is my first Forgotten Jolly box set. Yeah, they've released seven of these things. I remember when they released the first one, I was interested in getting it, but I heard real mixed reviews on the movies and never got around to it. And then they just kept releasing more and more and more. And it got kind of overwhelming and I just never jumped in. But now I've got volume seven. I know this is, oh, I got to be careful about what it shows. Okay. It's got some stuff on the back that I can't show, but I'll just show you guys that right there. Um, I know these are all 1980s Jalo films. 80s Jalo is a definitely a particular flavor. Uh, there's a lot of 80s Jalo films that I like. So that's cool. Okay. So we've got it looks like it's mystery, spelled a little uh, mysteriously, but it looks like it is called mystery. So that is cool. It is from 1983. And then we've got Obsession, A Taste of Fear from 1987. And then Sweets from a Stranger from 1987. These are really, really cool artwork. That one probably the least, but these other two so, so cool. So these, these should be a good time. I am looking forward to this for sure. So that's Forgotten Jolly, volume seven. And then I've got a couple of more releases here. This is the one that I think I'm the most excited for. It is Corpse Mania. This is a Hong Kong horror film. I've been getting really into Hong Kong movies. So far, every Hong Kong film that I have watched from Vinegar Syndrome, I have really liked. There's some of my favorite stuff that I've ever seen from Vinegar Syndrome. So I'm really intrigued whenever they release a Hong Kong film. I mean, this is called Corpse Mania. Look at the cover. That is so, so cool. Oh, it's 4K. I didn't even realize it's 4K. Okay, that's awesome. This is probably going to be the one that I watch first. Really, really excited. And then this is a movie I know nothing about, but I actually heard some decent things about it from some friends I was talking to this weekend. And uh, that is The Ghost Dance. I also watched the trailer for this, and it looks fun. It looks like it's an 80s slasher with a bit of a Native American bent to it. I think he's a he's a, a dead Native American guy who comes back for life to life and uh, goes around killing people. 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't quite know what to expect. But it sounds fun. It's from 1982. Great year. So that is the ghost dance. So there you go, folks. That is my haul for the month of October. Insane. I know there's so much stuff. There's so much to see. But what kind of stuff have you been picking up? Let me know down in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, I'll put another one of my Blu-ray hauls right up here, as well as my playlist of Blu-ray reviews that you can check out right down there. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Give a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed this. And don't forget to have a great Halloween season, a very spooky one. And I'll see you next time.